So it's your boy, Downsize, and I'm back once again on my block with another hood classic. So I want to give greater context to the live that I had with Greyhound the other day on his channel uh, where he speaks about the second split. Now, he's speaking from a, a particular standpoint, and that's why I asked the questions that I did where he was, and given a time frame of these things, right? Now, these are the actions as they would play out. But what people need to understand is, is there's a cause and effect here at play, and context matters. So what caused the second split, right? It's, it's easily understandable when you understand that these, this chain of events could only be made possible by the policy that was, that was enacted by Arizona Department of Corrections, which was done in coordination with the state of Arizona and the U.S. federal government who funded all of it. Now, I get out prior to RJ and Slack being sent out of state by weeks I can't tell you exactly how many but by weeks Greyhound was in Tucson at the time and he comes down to kick it with me to stay with me now okay were it not for RJ and Slack being sent out of state when they did with things at play as they were, i.e. Um, the Terry Stewart uh, uh, conspiracy was still under investigation, mind you, because the details of what was said by Junior Velez in his testimony proved to be true. They would, he was there. They were there at that time because everything is as those people who were there would testify to. It's true. He recanted and everything else, so it's irrelevant. But this is crucial because it's this that triggers law enforcement to pick up Wattlehead, who was suspect, in the murder of Chino Mike's girlfriend, his old lady's husband or estranged husband or something like that, right? Him and Buffalo. So when Wattlehead is picked up, he's arrested with, with, with crack cocaine, powder cocaine, and a loaded 9mm, which is all federal. It's a life sentence. So when he gets to Alhambra, he talks. He debriefs with Todd Garish for however long it was. And he gave up historical information dating way back to the beginnings. <coughs> so... This is not known to a lot of people. This is only known to very, very few people at the time. You would have to be getting out to know. Or you would have to be out to know. Certain details of what's going on because it's all taking place right as I'm being released from prison, from Simron. Greyhound had already gotten out. He had got beat me out by maybe a couple months. So... So then, when we come to this point where they're sent out of state, right? Because all this happens, right? Watto head, and mind you, another thing, uh, Sleepy, Dirty Dan, all these dudes, all of this is taking place. All of these dudes turned, all of them, all of them had said what they said. It is what it is. You're talking about the, the top of the, the mess of the Mexican mafia breaking apart. That's what happened. It was, it was torn apart. And it's by design when they created the STG policy to begin with. They had a strategy, a long-term strategy to break the Mexican mafia up. So as I was getting to, we get to this point where they get sent out of state you know, grounds out, I get out, and there's a lot of cleaning up to do. There's a, there's a lot of people 
that are pushing for power at the top. And it's all, and it's all people from Dupervilla Projects. Indio is an outlier. Everyone else are, are outliers in this store because those who are really pushing for the top are from Dupervilla Projects. And they start targeting each other. I won't get too deep into it because I can't, obviously. But I can speak as deeply as it all is to all of it, obviously. So it must be understood that there was a plan to begin with to cause these splits, these divisions. From where I sit, it's predictable. It was predictable that certain people would do what they did. It's easy to play people into themselves when you understand what they do about us, the internal records that they have of us, the profiles that they've created of us. Now, I know everybody wants me to get into those details. I can, like I said. But people need to understand that it's it's really, really important. And why I'm getting to this is because for so long, people believed the hype about characters that were involved with the Mexican Mafia because of, because of the brand itself and what certain members have been known to do. But that's not the majority. That's the minority that do that. And I know all of them. I know what every last one of them has always been capable of. So when when they ran afoul of me and they said what they said about me, I, I acted accordingly. I addressed it accordingly. And I let none slide for what they did and said about me behind my back. RJ and everyone included. Now, I want to conclude this one by by getting to a point because Greyhound and I have different relationships with these people, with RJ, Little Ricky, and, and the likes of everyone. We have far different relationships, personal relationships with them from, from, you know, however far back they all go. And so we have different perspectives of them. Now, I have, I have, I have a, a, a certain certain respect in, in, of them for, you know, where we come from and all this shit, whatever. But it must be understood that I was backstabbed and betrayed in a way that for me personally, because not, none of them ever stood up until now with Greyhound and were mad enough to admit this shit, you know what I mean, and give me my rifle pass and all this shit, then you know what, as far as I'm concerned, they died in that disgrace. Because they never gave me my rightful place. It was a disgrace of it was a disgrace to me created by them in their denials. Because everybody just says, don't fuck with him. He ain't he ain't he, he, he ain't shit, whatever. He's a piece of shit, whatever people want to say. But that's the best that all these killers and shit could say and do about me. It must be understood that. And it must be clear that. Because, you know, like I said, I have a different view of all of it and everyone involved in it. And I respect what people, you know, everyone's view of this. I do. I get it. But people need to understand that there are those, you know, who were who were harmed by this shit in ways that we've earned a right to say what the fuck we want. And I don't give a fuck how people feel. They cringe or whatever. We're still going to get to it. Regardless, and I'm out.